Find the particular solution for the differential equation y double prime of x plus y of x equals 4x cosine of x. So as always, we start off with our homogeneous portion, where we set our left-hand side, y double prime, and I'll drop the x term, that's implicit, plus y equal to the right-hand side of 0. And for the auxiliary portion, we have r squared plus 1 equal to 0, where r squared is 2 primes and no primes, just the coefficient. Solving, we have r squared equal to negative 1. So we get our two solutions of r homogeneous equal to 0 plus or minus i, which means that alpha equals 0, or rather alpha homogeneous equals 0, and beta homogeneous equal to 1. Now that we know what r h is, let's move on to y particular. Unfortunately, we do have a cosine term here, so that will elongate our solution. So it should be in the general format of p to the power of s times a decreasing polynomial of degree m, starting with ace of m t to the m plus ace of m minus 1 t to the m minus 1, so on and so forth until we hit ace 1 of t plus ace of 0 times e to the alpha particular t times cosine of beta particular t plus everything all over again, t to the s times the same decreasing polynomial of degree m, but now we use b. So b sub m times t to the m plus b sub m minus 1 times t to the m minus 1 until b sub 1t plus b sub 0. Now we have to actually keep our a and b terms the same. We can't turn it to a, b, c, d to avoid confusion times e to the alpha particular t sine of beta particular t. It's a very long solution. But you'll come to see that since there is no sine term, we essentially call this all zero. But we can't just do that yet. What we do know, though, is that alpha particular is zero, since there is no e term. However, it is implicit that e to the zero is one, one times cosine x. Therefore, alpha particular equals zero, and beta particular equals one since it's just 1 times x. And we'll let t equal x, so I don't have to rewrite this whole thing. And unfortunately, that means that r particular equals r homogeneous, which means that s equals 1. So we're going to have to bring everything up by power of t, such that t to the s equals 1 is just t to the 1. Additionally, we can see that there is a t term, or x term, being multiplied by everything. So m equals 1 as well. So y particular now equals t times the first t term, a sub 1t, plus a sub 0, times e to our 0 term, since alpha p and beta p stay the same, times cosine of t, plus t again, b sub 1t, plus b sub 0, e to the 0t, sine of just t again. And we can rewrite this once more to get rid of our 0 terms, as well as distributing our t terms, so we have a1t squared plus a0t times cosine t plus, and moving the t here as well, b1t squared plus b0t sine t. This is the most straightforward form we can give it. Now our goal is to take two more derivatives, which will suck, because there's a lot of product rule going on here, into this equation, and once we set the left hand and right hand side equal to each other, we have to find a1, a0, b1, and b0. All we have right now is our y of x term, so we gotta do two more derivatives. So y p prime equals the whole derivative, and if you remember for product rule, it becomes f prime g plus f g prime. And we have to do this twice, since we have two f g's. So our first f is this whole term, g is this term, and our second f is this term, and g is that term. So starting with f prime, the derivative of a1t squared is 2a1t plus a sub 0. We drop the independent variable. Keep cosine t the same. And now we add our first term again, a1t squared plus a0t times our derivative of negative sine t. Now moving on to our second portion, derivative of this whole term is 2b1t plus b0 times our normal sine t. It's very similar to what we just did. And rewriting that times the derivative of sine t is cosine t. 
So yeah, this is just our first derivative. We got to do this one more time. So y p double prime is going to be the following. Derivative of the first term is 2 a sub 1, and we drop the a sub 0, cosine t, plus, keep now the first portion the same, and derivative of cosine t is negative sine t. That was just this part. Now moving on to here, we have our derivative of the first portion, 2a1t plus a0 times our normal negative sine t plus the normal first portion times the derivative of negative sine t is just negative cosine t, and that's the second part done. For the third part, 2b1 is by itself times the normal sine t plus the whole portion now, 2b1t, plus b0, times the derivative of sine t is cosine t, and I think I'm running out of room, I might just stack it over itself, and derivative of the first portion is 2b1t, plus b0, times our normal cosine t, plus the full first term again, negative sine t. Now that's a long solution. So let's just bite the bullet and plug that into our initial equation, y double prime plus y equals 4t cosine t. So y double prime is our entire portion here. But I'm going to do something a little different and factor in all the sine terms and cosine terms by themselves. So I'll have a huge term times sine t plus another huge term, cosine t. So we have our first sine term here and you have to remember to distribute the negative sign, negative 2 a1t minus a0 minus 2 a1t, because we have our other negative sign t here, minus a0 again, so it kind of just duplicates itself, and moving on here we have our plus 2b1 sine t, so plus 2b1. We have our last sign term here, minus b1t squared minus b0t. And that's everything for sine t. Doing the same thing for cosine now, we have our first term, 2a1 cosine t, minus a1t squared minus a0t, plus 2b1t plus b0. And our last cosine terms here, plus 2b1t plus b0 cosine t. And that was just our y double prime. Now we got to plug our y term back in. Fortunately, we don't have to do our y prime. There isn't a y prime here. And I'll probably move it down here. So just act as if I'm moving left to right here. We have our b1t squared plus b0t for our sine t's. This is a lot faster. Plus a1t squared plus a0t cosine t. And that was our y term equals 4t cosine t. So now we got to do our simplification. Personally, I would say the best way to do this process is to turn it to one huge sine term plus one huge cosine term equals this right hand side. So we're just going to rewrite this whole term here plus these two plus this whole term here plus these two here. And we can also get rid of our brackets. So minus 2 a1t minus a0, minus 2a1t, minus a0, plus 2b1, minus b1t squared, minus b0t, and now adding our sine terms here, plus b1t squared, plus b0t, and that is all we have for sine. Plus our cosine terms, minus 2a1, minus a1t squared, minus a0t, plus 2b1t, plus b0, plus 2b1t, plus b0, plus a1t squared plus a0t, cosine t, equals our 4t cosine t. So let's try to see if we can simplify any sine and cosine terms before we do our systems of equations. And looking at our sine term, you can see a minus b1t squared being added 
2a plus b1t squared, so those cancel. Likewise with our minus b0t plus b0t. And for our cosine term, let's see, minus a1t squared cancels with plus a1t squared minus a0t plus a0t. That helped a lot. And are there any other likewise terms? We have a minus 2a1t with another minus 2a1t, so those duplicate. Same thing with our minus a0s. And plus 2b1t plus 2b1t plus b0 plus b0, and that's it. That leaves us with minus 4a1t minus 2a0 plus 2b1, don't forget that one here, sine t, plus 4b1t. I'm not doing left to right, I'm actually doing highest power of t to lowest power of t, minus 2a1 plus 2b0, and that's it. Cosine t equals 4t cosine t. See, here's the thing now. There's a t term and a non-t term within the sine terms. So there's going to be two sets of equations we have to worry about. I'll try my best to write it explicitly, but we have our minus 4a1t term by itself. There is no other t, sine t. And we do have a t cosine t as well, plus 4b1t cosine t, plus just our constants, our t to the 0 terms, minus 2a0 plus 2b1 sine t plus minus 2a1 plus 2b0 cosine t. And this will equal the following. We start off with our t's and our trig functions plus our constants with our trig functions. By that I mean 0t sine t, since there wasn't one to begin with, just a 4t cosine t, plus that 4t cosine t, plus now 0 sine t, without the t, plus 0 cosine t. I have to show this explicitly to show how the uh, system will work. And now all we have to do is match them. So for our t terms, we have negative 4a1t sine t, but we drop the t's. So minus 4a1 sine t, plus 4b1t, drop the t, cosine t, you could keep the t's, but they're going to divide anyways, so just leave them out to begin with. And this equals 0t sine t plus 4t cosine t. All we have to do is match the coefficients, and you can quickly see a1 equals 0, and positive 4b1 equals positive 4. Divide by 4, b1 equals 1. So a1 equals 0, b1 equals 1. But we still have to worry about a0 and b0. Moving on to our constant terms, we have minus 2 a0 plus 2b1 sine t plus negative 2 a1 plus 2b0 cosine t equals 0 sine t plus 0 cosine t, since we never had that to begin with. Matching the coefficients for the sine terms, minus 2 a0 plus 2b1 equals 0, and for cosine terms, minus 2a1 plus 2b0 equals 0. So let's do those out. We already know a1 and b1, so let's just try to solve for a0 and b0. So moving our a0 to the right-hand side, we have 2b1 equals positive 2 a0. So we can tell that a0 equals b1, which we found to be 1. So now a0 equals 1. Likewise, a1 equals b0. And I made a little notation mistake here. I accidentally wrote this too a little weird, but it's positive 2a1. I mistook it to be negative 2a1. So we have to propagate that further and correct for that mistake. All that changes is turning this to a positive 2a1. This turns positive, which turns this one positive, turning that positive making that positive, and yeah, that's it. So it's actually plus 2a1 plus 2b0. So a1 equals negative b0. a1 equals 0. That was a very small error, but it can show that this can be messed up very easily. So now that we know what our undetermined coefficients are, a1 equals 0, b1 equals 1, a0 equals 1, and b0 
equals 0. We can plug that into our y particular solution that we had up here. Uh, let me see if I can fit that. y particular equals, so for the cosine term, I'll put it on the top, a 1t squared becomes 0t squared plus a0t, a0 is 1, so plus t, cosine t, plus b1t squared is just t squared, plus b0t, plus 0 times t, sine t. And that gives us our final answer of y particular equals t cosine t, plus t squared sine t. See, for these types of problems, you don't really use method of undetermined coefficients. For this, I'd probably do variation of parameters, or at least Laplace. You'd get the same solution, which isn't even that long. And remember that this is just a particular solution. So for the general solution, it would be y gen equals y h plus y p. So using the r h we found here, we would make our homogeneous solution, and you just add this term on top of that. But the problem just asks for yp. So I hope this video made sense. If it did, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.